I, I think they should have, I mean, okay, so we're talking on the legal aspects a little bit more. I think the offenders, pedophiles and rapists and all that stuff, first they should be injected with the trip chip so they can be tracked everywhere they go like men in black in that movie where they like the alien leaves the zone or whatever and the alarm goes off they should all be injected with a chip that's a no-brainer and I personally I think the pedophiles and all that should be castrated and I don't think they should ever be let out of jail ever actually I think they should deal with them like they do in some other countries they just shoot them you know, and they shoot them with one bullet. Why waste any more? That's all they're worth. They're not even worth that. Just shoot them with one bullet in the back of the head and call it good. You know. That's how they should deal with it. Not waste a bunch of money in the U.S. legal system and let them back out and let them reoffend because they will. You can bank money on it. Just like the stock market. If, if they had a money game where you could bet, like you could select a child molester or pedophile or rapist, and uh, you could pick a particular one with a name that's got a chip in him, and then you could bet on how long it would take him to reoffend, whether it be one year or two years or three years, you know, and bet money on it, and they turn that into a game, I can't think of how much money that game would make. You know, see, that's what they should do is something like that. I think another game that they should do with the pedophile, child molester, or rapist is uh, they should put them on an island, which they already do some jails and stuff, but they should put them on an island like way out in the Pacific or somewhere that's where they don't, where they can survive. I mean, where, the, where, where it's not too hot or cold, maybe by the equator or whatever, where they can survive without clothes and all that stuff that has fresh water. And just helicopter, drop them in, and then just have like a military ship or Coast Guard ship, you know, patrol the island 24-7 so they can't escape. But just have like TV cameras set up all over the island. And, uh, you know, like have a TV cameras all over the island and have a real survival show with those sick bastards, you know. And um, just put them all there, there and let them do what they want to with each other. You know, airdrop them in. Maybe... Each one you could airdrop in, no guns, uh, or you get a gun with one bullet in it. So they have a choice. They get a knife, they get a gun with one bullet in it, you know, to, to fend themselves against the other stuff. And, uh, I don't know, maybe a grenade or something, you know, yeah, or, or plastic explosives. Pick your, pick your choice, you know. So not enough to stop everybody on the island and then just let them do what they naturally are going to do anyways because they will but the good thing about that is is you're not draining you're not overcrowding the jail system and you're not draining the, the our tax money you know it would be cheap and you could take them in a plane and a para, para, you could drop by parachute or even a boat and just take a bunch of them all at once and just let them go on the island then you could film it and you could have a special channel that's like, you'd have to rate it X, you know, that only, it would have to be blocked so the average kid couldn't see it or whatever. So adults could like tune into the island channel and see what's happening. They could even call it Happy Island. Yeah. That'd be a great way to do it then. And I think chips too. Yeah, that's a real money maker, letting the pedophiles back out to reoffend. Real money maker. That's what they do. So there's a lot of denial. I'm still on the denial, I guess. Uh, I guess it takes one to know one. So, um, uh, curious pattern that I had in my life was that most of my girlfriends uh, were molested or whether for whether they worked through the denial or not which is sad and uh, some people just they die in denial I don't know what the statistics are in sexual abuse with that, but I, I know that a high percentage of uh, people in, 
AA or sexually abused and they use alcohol and drugs to mask it and they they have like a one in I don't know 40 percent chance of, of surviving the rest of their life you know getting through the denial of that problem which is related if they're working on what they should be <clears throat> yeah and then uh, also I can if I listen to somebody talk for about five minutes or 10 minutes, regardless of what they're talking about, whether they're talking about politics or religion or anything, I can, I can pretty much tell whether they've been sexually molested or not. I mean, after you've gone to therapy long enough, um, you can kind of spot the people that have been molested. And see, a lot of people that are famous don't want to publicly admit that they were because it's humiliating and they're afraid they're going to lose money off it. So that kind of keeps everybody in denial too. But there's a lot of famous people, let me tell you, that have been molested. A lot of them. Yeah. And there's a lot of politicians that have been molested. So there's a lot of people really high up that have been molested that, you know, all I have to do is hear them speak. I mean, they can talk about whatever they want, whatever topic, but you can tell by their speech. You like, uh, like you know, some people have an accent like that or whatever. Well, they have a certain accent from their sexual abuse. That's that's buried right in there. So uh, if you know to listen for that accent, uh, you can see that a lot of people are. But then again, maybe a lot of the powerful politicians or movie stars or whatever are in denial about it so maybe that's why they don't go public with it either but I can tell yeah so uh, I guess that's on the denial phase I guess uh, uh, maybe I'll start talking about uh, recovery a little bit So uh, part of the recovery is at first uh, you got to work on the denial like we discussed. I just mainly showed outwardly all the denial in society and all that, but you have to look in the mirror. And nobody can do that for you. I mean, there's all kinds of psychiatrists and doctors and all that stuff that claim to help you look in the mirror, but they're in denial too, like the pedophile fucker that molested me when I was three. See, he was a doctor right here. If you can read English. So, uh, I had training in child psychiatry. I've worked and been with a consultant to the juvenile court. Imagine how many kids he fucked up there. I've been consultant to orthopedic hospital child psychiatry. Oh, you'd probably think, oh, there's a cute little boy. I think I'll have him as a patient get after him. And then um, Department of Child Psychiatry. So, um, doctors aren't always your best bet. And like I've said before, I've gone to ACOA or, or self-help groups uh, where uh, doctors will, people people will talk about their doctors in the group, and it's like, oh, my doctor, after my health insurance ran out, he just cut me off or whatever. You know, so they're in it for the money. That's the bottom line. They might be in denial, and they might not be all that good. I've seen 30 shrinks. No, I've seen more like 40. I have seen 40 psychiatrists, minimum. I've probably seen more than I can count, really, but I don't know. It's 40 or 50 different doctors. And, you know, about alcoholism or sexual abuse or drug addiction, but I never had a problem with drugs, really. I mean, I was already doped up on drugs to be molested, but I didn't become addicted to drugs by their own. I was an alcoholic genetically, but anyways. Um, so doctors aren't always... A best bet and I, like I said you know I'd hear people whining about their doctor or this or that and some people that would talk about their doctors I always asked them the key question you know do they encourage you to go to a support group 
for sexual abuse or alcoholism or drug addiction. Now, most do for the alcoholism, but they don't always do it for the sexual abuse or whatever. And then a lot of people are ashamed and a lot of people can't talk about it. They sign gag orders or whatever. But um, some of them want to keep you in a box and they want to manipulate you and they want to make you off money off you or whatever. So not all physicians are a good bet. And another thing, a key question I ask is, um, have you, does your therapist or psychiatrist recommend any self-help books that you read self-help books? And if they say that their psychiatrist does not recommend that they read self-help books or whatever, I'll know immediately they're getting victimized there and the doctor doesn't know what he's doing at all. And if they say that their doctor doesn't recommend they go support groups, they just happen to accidentally go in or whatever, then I'll know that their doctor's manipulating them. And depending on the books that they mention, I will know how good their doctor or therapist is. But see, as far as therapy and help goes and all that, I went because I had a choice. I was going to live or die. It was real simple. It was cut and dry. You're going to slowly commit suicide with drugs and alcohol, or you're going to stop and deal with it. You know, fortunately, I didn't become a pedophile, so I didn't have to go to groups where I became a pedophile or a child molester. And they weren't allowed to the groups that I went to. But, um, yeah. So, you listen, go to the support groups, and a doctor, a good doctor, if you can find one. But mainly, I'd recommend support groups because uh, that helped me out the most. Because uh, you hear stories, uh, maybe the psychiatrist, most doctors become doctors because they have a vested interest because they're abused themselves or whatever. But some just chose it, I don't know for why, if they weren't abused, but they decided they wanted to be a sexual abuse. I don't know why they'd pick that profession, I don't know. I think it would be because they'd be abused, but theoretically if they weren't, and they weren't in denial, but uh, yeah. So uh, you can see a doctor or uh, probably get a self-help group, and then I'd recommend uh, watching YouTube videos like this, uh, videos of people that have been abused to talk about it publicly. I'd recommend going to support groups and I'd recommend reading every book you can and studying your abuse as much as you can with as much time as you got. <coughs> it's a uh, it's uh, tough because uh, it's like once you start to work on it you open up another world and it's really tough. I mean, I've, I've gone through chemotherapy before, and 